Today, I'd like to talk about artists and how we see them and what that means to us as a society and to us as individual makers. Every biographical movie about an artist depicts its subject as some sort of dysfunctional weirdo. Picasso. To control love. He loves to turn his friends into his slaves. I'm here for him and for him alone. This is the story of the one woman who had the strength to challenge him. No one leaves a man like Picasso. Van Gogh, a psychotic suicidal. that lust for life which drove him to the extremes of passion. Uh, Pollock, a drunken suicidal. Yeah. You open that mouth again, I'll kill you! You are killing me! You are killing me! You are killing me! Oh. Michelangelo, a disagreeable obsessive. I will paint man as God made him in the glory of his nakedness! Frida Kahlo, uh, a victim, disability in relationships. <laughs> Behind the romance, we'll have to get married, you know. But you don't believe in marriage. Of course I do. I've had two wives already. Behind the madness. <laughs> Toulouse-Lautrec, a horny dwarf. The story of shameless, seductive Paris. All her loves, ladies, her lusty legends. And Toulouse-Lautrec, the man who loved her and gave her immortality, who endured his grotesque ugliness to become his first love. Beethoven, a deaf crank. He was a legend, a genius, and a scoundrel. This man is a common oaf. Your lack of passion is unforgivable. I shall have to beat you. But behind the music, he is stone deaf. Mozart, an out of control child. Mozart? Mozart? <laughs> How good is he? This Mozart. He's remarkable. He's an unprincipled, spoiled, conceited brat. <laughs> it's true. Their genius is a curse that's fed only by their tortured souls. In America, we love athletes. We love pop stars. We love billionaires. But we love to hate artists. When we're about 10, we're taught that being an artist is impractical and childish and self-indulgent. That talent is this God-given gift that you either have or you shouldn't bother. Artists are arrogant, disconnected, elitist, millionaires, or paupers. And the set of myths is why parents accept all the cuts that they make to art and music education, but they'll do anything to promote athletics in schools. No one would want their kid to want to grow up to be an artist, heaven forbid. But it wasn't always this way. Doing watercolors used to be a standard part of a decent education in the 19th century. So did reading and writing poetry. Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Da Vinci, they were all government employees. But in 21st century America, that critic in your head has the support and encouragement of the whole gang, your parents, your teachers, your neighbors, your bosses, and your role models. Even so-called creative people in the media promote this illusion that it's either a, a fool's game or the lottery. So it's small wonder that it's so hard to drown out that chattering monkey voice in your head, the one that says, don't sing unless you're going to become a pop star. Uh, don't paint unless you know you'll be a genius who's going to be recognized in your own lifetime and make billions. 
The winner of Portrait Artist of the Year is Curtis Holder. And if you have to practice at something, work on your pitch, on your swing, on your kick, on your dunk shot. Those are skills that will pave the way for your future. As a creative person, you're fighting enough obstacles as it is. Don't let your own brain join in this conspiracy. Tell it to shut up and let you get back to work. Because all these voices, so right about how to build a business, how to make profit, they're flat wrong about how to build a decent life. Without art, your soul suffers. You lack a chance to express who you are, to hone your own point of view, to make your life your own, to recognize beauty, to deepen your appreciation and love of the moment, to feel peace in your soul. You're less than human no matter how many Super Bowl rings you're wearing. But when you do make something and you share it with the world, the voice in your head is going to be proven wrong again because people won't say, well, that drawing is pathetic, that poem is lame, that note was slightly flat, that diary reveals what a moron the writer was, that person is mentally deranged, that they're out of touch with reality. Don't take this personally. You're one of the worst singers I've ever heard in my life. All those things are not going to happen. People are not going to say those things. And if they stop to judge what you're making at all, they'll almost certainly say, I wish I did that. And that'll give you the chance to say, well, why don't you? I hope this was helpful. If it was, here are three things that you can do to help build your creativity. Subscribe to this channel. I make new videos each week. To sign up for my weekly essay, it's all about ways to kickstart your creativity, and it's free. And three, watch another video. Thanks a lot.